Hashtag Ask Goji Man, can you explain the main areas of the digestive system that are most likely to create ex-vegans? Great question, let's get to it. Roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. Hey everyone, good to see you again. If we haven't met before, then hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm currently finishing a master's in nutrition and qualifying as a nutritionist. And later this year, I'm gonna be doing a PhD in nutritional science. I do vegan health and nutrition videos as often as I can under the hashtag Ask Goji Man. So if you have a question for me, then hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below, or alternatively send your video questions through to contact at gojimannutrition.com. As always, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO organic acids and stool tests via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So if we start with the stomach, now I'm sure you're all aware that the stomach produces stomach acid and if the stomach is too alkaline and not acidic enough, then it can trigger all sorts of problems in the digestive system. Now the first problem that can occur in your stomach is when your hydrochloric acid has a pH above 3 and then you can get undigested proteins and putrefaction which causes a lot of gas. Now one of the biggest issues when the stomach acid is too alkaline is that it isn't strong enough to kill off pathogens from entering your digestive system. So as a result you can get gut dysbiosis, candida, SIBO and other gut infections. Next up with the stomach acid issues is the problem surrounding heartburn. So if the stomach acid is above 3 on the pH scale, it then causes the esophageal sphincter on the top of the stomach to remain open, which then allows acid into the esophagus and then causes the heartburn issues. Now if your food sits in the stomach and causes indigestion, this is usually a sign that your stomach acid isn't strong enough. And if this is the case, then you can take betaine hydrochloride, which is derived from beets, which will then boost your stomach acid. Now just a word of warning, you absolutely don't want to take betaine hydrochloride if you have any ulcers present as this will cause all sorts of issues. And if you do have ulcers then you may want to focus on getting chlorophyll into your gut. Now if you have stomach acid issues, the undigested food leaving the stomach will then hit the small and large intestines where the gut bacteria will ferment the undigested food, causing lots of gas and bloating. And the other problem this creates is that you need sufficiently strong stomach acid, otherwise the pancreas won't produce and release pancreatic enzymes. Now enzymes are essentially proteins that help you break down your food. So as you can see, if the stomach acid isn't acidic enough to start breaking down your food and the acid isn't acidic enough to release your pancreatic enzymes to break down your fats, proteins and carbohydrates, then you are really going to start running into problems when the food hits the large and small intestines. Now most allergies in the body come from undigested proteins getting into your bloodstream, usually via intestinal permeability or leaky gut. Your immune system can then become responsive to these undigested proteins and then you can start running into lots of food allergies and autoimmune issues. If you have pancreatic problems then you are likely to experience pain in the left lower quadrant underneath your rib cage, and you will also notice your stool is very sticky. Moving through the digestive tract, we then come to the bile and the bile is produced in the liver and stored in your gallbladder. Now remember, bile is pivotal for breaking down fat and releasing those fat soluble vitamins, so A, D, E and K. Now typical symptoms of gallbladder issues are bloating, burping or your stool will float in the toilet if you aren't digesting fats properly. Now the next stage in the digestive process is both the small and large intestines and these small and large intestines are over 30 foot in length. And while you're not supposed to have too many bacteria in the small intestines, in the small and large intestines combined, you will have approaching a billion microbes. Hundreds and hundreds of different species of bacteria, yeast, fungus and moulds that help you break down your stool, help you produce your vitamins and also help you digest your food. Now there are opportunistic pathogens trying to occupy your intestines that will get into the gut when your stomach acid is low and it doesn't kill them off. Now if you have a healthy microbiome with lots of lactobacillus then this is not normally a problem. Lactobacillus produce lactic acid and lactic acid makes it very uncomfortable for bad bacteria and yeast to live. Now if you have constipation, candida or yeast problems or even bad breath then it is typically a sign that you don't have sufficient good bacteria to help the digestive process in your body. Now the stomach acid, the pancreatic enzymes and the bile and gallbladder are where the digestive problems are enabled. But when the pathogens are allowed to enter the body because of these problems, it can then cause other problems. 
For example, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can develop in which you get an overpopulation in the small intestines which causes the fermentation of your food in the small intestines which then causes lots of bloating and gas. Also, if you have an overpopulation of bad bacteria or yeast, then these can crowd out the good guys responsible for degrading your histamines and oxalates in the gut and then this can further cause food sensitivity issues. Now when looking at small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, parasites, H. pylori or other similar gut infections, then they nearly always start when you're exposed to these bacteria and parasites when your immunity is poor. Or an equally a massive problem is our over-reliance on antibiotics and other medications that simply decimate our gut. And this will occur if you have poor immunity in conjunction with a poor diet and you have trauma caused by medications etc. So with medications, it is often very easy to spot the impacts on your health because often you will be fine and then you take the medications and then your gut will simply fall apart. So you will start getting all manner of digestive problems and food intolerances, etc. But with compromised immunity, unless you know what you are looking for, then it often takes people longer to identify the root cause of their issues. Now there could be lots of things impacting on your gut immunity, so yes obviously poor diets, alcohol etc etc etc. But there is also often seemingly innocuous foods that will trash a poor gut further and allow the bad bacteria and yeast to overrun. Now a good analogy here is a water bucket and if you leave the tap on and it all spills over then you're going to start running into those health problems. The same can be said with the gut and things like gluten, pesticides, stress, lack of sleep, low stomach acids and low amounts of digestive enzymes, oxalates, sulfur, histamines, etc, etc. All of these when the gut is already compromised with gut dysbiosis will cause the bucket to overflow and the problems to start. And in fact a lot of these problems with immunity are usually triggered when stomach acid is low for whatever reason. So as I have already alluded to, think of the stomach acid as a force field, so when the acid is reduced the force field comes down and in comes the bacteria and yeast and down goes your immunity. It also has a knock on effect with what we call the proteolytic enzymes and bile production. So the proteolytic enzymes break down the proteins and the bile breaks down the fats in your diet. So just to reiterate, so low stomach acid triggers low enzyme production in the pancreas and low bile production in the gallbladder, which then allows undigested food to hit your small intestines where the bacteria will simply just ferment the crap out of the food, causing all manner of health problems around your body. And remember, gut issues aren't always linear. So when your stomach acid is low, you get knock-on effects on bile and enzymes, and then your immunity goes down. Some people initially get massive bloating and digestive issues, and then this will pass, and then the person is left with massive issues with anxiety, depression, brain fog, and all of these other issues that their doctor is clueless about, and then it costs them thousands in the process. Others will have these issues plus bloating and cramping and possibly food intolerances and maybe skin issues for 10 to 15 years and it is often difficult for them to join up all of the dots. But it's only when you delve into the stool test, the SIBO test and organic acid test that the person figures out all of these bacterial issues and then they begin treatment and then the brain fog, anxiety, food intolerances, bloating and pain start lifting and the person can finally understand how everything is connected via their gut. So hopefully you can see when you pop the bonnet and see what's going on in the engine that you don't need to become another ex-vegan. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, keep the questions coming. Hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below. And remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.